Hello Titans! This is the morning, afternoon, and evening edition of Titan TV News. I'm Eric Walling and Fonson. And I'm Michael Gorman. And this is all the news you need to know. Addressing a group of Republican supporters Monday, presidential hopeful Rudy Giuliani discussed his Democrat past. After an entire political career as a Democrat, Giuliani spent five years as an independent. Quote, I would say to myself, Democrats care about the poor, and Republicans don't. And how can I join the party that doesn't care about the poor, Giuliani said. I finally came to the conclusion that we care about the poor more. As far as his foreign policy experience goes, Giuliani asserts that he has spent the years since he has been in office traveling the world and gaining a better grasp on foreign policy issues from first-hand experience. Giuliani has two images, a 9-11 security image, which conservatives embrace, and a liberally social image, including supporting abortion and gay marriage, which keeps many conservatives skeptical. But Giuliani is obviously doing something right, as he climbed from 34 to 44 percent over the past month in concurrent Washington Post ABC News polls. The former New York mayor's main rival, John McCain, on the other hand, dropped from 27 to 21 percent. A new cheap, easy-to-take pill to treat malaria was introduced March 1st, the product of a recent collaboration between medical charity Doctors Without Borders and international drug company Sanofi Aventis. A treatment will cost less than $1 for adults and less than $0.50 cents for children. Adults with malaria will take only two pills a day for three days, and the pill will come in three smaller once-a-day sizes for infants and young children. Malaria is an infectious disease that is widespread in tropical regions. In Africa, malaria kills 3,000 babies and children each day and causes between 1 and 3 million deaths annually, mostly among young children under 5. Malaria is a disease commonly associated with poverty because in countries where malaria is common, average per capita GDP rises only 0.4%, compared to the 2.4% per year rate in other countries. The medicine, called ASAC, is a pill combining artemisinin invented in China using sweet wormwood with amodiaquine, an older drug. Doctors like to treat diseases with multi-drug cocktails because it cuts down the chance that resistance to any one drug will develop. Sanofi has decided not to seek any patents, so the pills can be freely copied by generic companies like those in India. This is a sacrifice of Sanofi's part, as not having the pills means the overall price will lower and they will lose profit. One reason for this decision is to remove the incentive for counterfeiters to produce fake drugs, which is a serious problem in Asia and a growing one across Africa. Fake malaria drugs, most offered as artemisinin, may be involved in up to 200,000 deaths from malaria each year. A federal jury convicted I. Lewis Scooter Libby of lying about his role in the leak of an undercover CIA officer's identity, finding the vice president's former chief of staff guilty of two counts of perjury, one count of making false statements, and one count of obstruction of justice, while acquitting him of a single count of lying to the FBI. The verdict culminated a nearly four-year investigation into how CIA official Valerie Plain's name was leaked to reporters in 2003. The trial revealed that top members of the administration were eager to discredit Payne's husband, former Ambassador Joseph Wilson, who accused the administration of doctoring pre-war intelligence on Iraq. Libby was not the source of the leak, however, and even though lead prosecutor Patrick Fitzgerald had stated in the past he wanted to prosecute the actual leaks, one of whom was Carl Rove, they did not have enough evidence. Almost everyone is in agreement, however, that Mr. Libby was the, quote, fall guy for the administration, as one juror put it. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid welcomed the jury's verdict and called on Bush to pledge not to pardon Libby. Before the trial began, the Justice Department had said that it had no pardon file active for Libby. Quote, it's about time someone in the Bush administration has been held accountable for the campaign to manipulate intelligence and discredit war critics, Reid said. Libby could face up to 25 years in prison when he is sentenced June 5th, but under federal sentencing guidelines is likely to face far less. Defense attorneys immediately promised to ask for a new trial or appeal the conviction, 